the title of the uh, message today is When You Feel Overwhelmed. When You Feel Overwhelmed. The message actually got changed, so we, we had another uh, something else slated, but I just, uh, just didn't feel that that was uh, quite right. And so the Lord brought us to this uh, title, When You Feel Overwhelmed. So if you have a Bible, please turn to Luke chapter 10. Luke 10, we'll be looking at Luke 10, 38 through 42. So being overwhelmed is a very common feeling. I'm I'm sure uh, many of you feel overwhelmed at times or maybe even right now. I know a lot of our mothers uh, feel overwhelmed. There's just so much to do and so little time. And so today we will look at this passage uh, with Jesus and two women, Mary and Martha. So Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. This is what the Word of God says. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. That is our passage for today, uh, we will, uh, I'll explain the text first, then we'll go into looking at uh, being distracted with much serving, and then we'll go into that good part uh, that Mary chose. So as we look at this passage, it says, as they went, so there's a group, it's Jesus and his disciples, likely traveling uh, from from uh, Galilee, making their way to Judea. Jerusalem is located there. And they entered a certain village. We know this village is Bethany from John chapter 11. Uh, John chapter 11 tells us that Mary, Martha, and their brother Lazarus lived in Bethany. Bethany was the location where Jesus ascended from the Mount of Olives. Bethany was on the eastern slope of the Mount of Olives. Bethany was two miles outside of Jerusalem, just a Sabbath day journey. And so a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. So Martha is uh, being very hospitable, and I want you to know that Jesus had a very close relationship with his family. Yes, Jesus loves everyone, but the Bible explicitly states in John chapter 11, verse 5, it says, Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. This was a very close relationship. I also want you to know that Martha was a disciple of Jesus Christ. In verse 40, you see uh, that Martha called him Lord. Also in John chapter 11, verse 27, it says that Martha believed that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. So this is a good-hearted Christian woman who opened up her home to Jesus and his disciples to provide hospitality. She was doing a wonderful thing. But in verse 40, it says that uh, she was 
distracted with much serving. So I'm sure a a simple meal would have been sufficient for Jesus and his disciples. But uh, Martha, she had a little more in mind. Martha said, Jesus and his disciples, man, I want to go above and beyond. And some of you guys do that with your serving as well. You want it to be excellent. You want it to be on point. And that's what Martha did. So Martha was laboring in the kitchen, but she became frustrated because her sister was not helping. Where was her sister at? Well, you see in verse 39 that Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet and hearing his word. That's where Mary was. And Martha should have been sitting too. She could have prepared a more simple meal, simple preparations, that would have been sufficient, and she would have had a chance to sit with Jesus. You know, when Jesus is in the house, you always want to give him your full attention. Now remember, Jesus is always in the house. (laughs) We always want to give Jesus our full attention. Martha's over here, and Jesus is over there, and Mary's over there. And so the first question that I I want to ask you today is serving distracting you from sitting? Is serving distracting you from sitting? Martha was serving. Mary was sitting. And so Martha came up to Jesus with sweat on her brow, with her apron. And she said, Jesus, don't you care about my situation? (laughs) Do you see what is going on here? Tell my sister to help me. Man, therefore, tell her to help me. And so Jesus used uh, this moment as a lesson on discipleship. And so Luke chapter 10, verses 41 through 42, it says, And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. So we talk about uh, much serving. What can much serving lead to? Well, much serving can lead you to be distracted from sitting at the feet of Jesus. Much serving can lead to you being worried and troubled about many things. This could be at work, in ministry, at home. And ultimately, much serving, it needs to be reevaluated. Some of us need to exchange uh, good things for the best thing. And while doing something uh, good, we don't want to be distracted from the main thing. Now, I'm going to tell on myself a little bit today. But uh, I struggle with much serving or doing too much. Or as my friend would say, doing the most. So I'm the self-proclaimed king of doing too much. Let's say uh, someone, we want to bring some donuts to celebrate a championship victory. And, you know, someone's like, hey, I got the donuts, the plain donuts. I'm like, well, I want the icing on the donuts to match the team colors. (laughs) And I want the donuts to have sprinkles on them. Right? So that's me. Doing too much, doing the most. So if you're like me, I won't even make you raise your hand, but you know in your heart if you're like me. We got some people in here like me, praise God. 
for, for those of you like me, kings and queens of doing the most, verse, 40, verse 41, go ahead and personalize that verse. So you can take out Martha's name and insert your own name. Don't worry, it's not heretical. We're doing it for the purpose of application. This does not count for adding or deleting from Scripture. All right, verse 41. And Jesus answered and said, Herb, Herb, you are worried and troubled about many things. So personalize that text. Some of us need to exchange much serving for manageable serving. You know who you are. I'm one of those people. So for me, preparing this text, I really had to process this text. So I want to give you uh, some practical application, how I would process this. Oftentimes we know what to do, but we just don't do the things that we know what to do. So for me, I'm like, okay, Herb, make things simple. So when I was preparing this message, I was thinking about, you know, the leadership priorities for the church that I'm focused on, uh, how I'm serving. And I realized that I'm uh, focusing on six leadership priorities. That's too much. Remember, I'm preaching too. And six leadership priorities. So then I wonder why I'm worried and troubled about many things because you're doing too much. So make things simple. Here's three questions you can look at in your life. Doing too much, much serving, it's distracting you from spending time with Jesus. One question, where is God leading you to prioritize? Six leadership priorities, there's all these things to do around the house. All these things I want to get to, but where is God leading you to prioritize? So you pray and ask the Lord, God, where are you leading me to prioritize? I certainly can't do six things. Not Superman, I'm not Superwoman. I'm not Jesus Christ, I'm merely a man or a woman. So where do you want me to prioritize? Number two, where do you have momentum? Where is God already moving? You know, The train is already going. You have momentum in some places and other places you don't have momentum and you're trying to get that momentum started. Another question, where do you have help? Where do you have buy-in? Other people to help you. So these questions help me make things more simple. So here was the practical process that I went through first. I looked at those questions and I looked at all my priorities. And I said, okay, uh, I'm going to reduce this down to three priorities. That's much better. I think I can handle three. I can do three. I can't do six, but I can do three. I can preach the word. I can still do three. So you have to, you know, put that in your own situation. You know how much you can do and what you can't do. Okay, so I reduced it down to three leadership priorities. And so you would say, well, what did you do with the other three things? Right, that's a question. Those other three things were really important, right? You identified them as priorities. Well, uh, I made a simple action plan and got them off my plate. That's what I did. Simple action plan, get them off your plate. Sometimes the best policy is simplicity. You can't give all your energy to everything, or else you will feel overwhelmed. And with those three other things, you just have to say, hey, that's good enough for now. And don't put your energy there. Focus on what you can focus on. So Martha, much serving. Mary chose the good part. She sat at the feet of Jesus. Now, this is the part of the message that I like even more because I don't have to tell on myself. So this part, I can go into my personal experience of choosing the good part and sitting at the feet of Jesus. So to me, this means like a prayer pillow. Y'all got prayer pillows? Am I the only one that prays on his knees? 
Anyone else pray? If you pray on your knees, raise your hand. Let me see. One, two. All right, we got 10 people that pray on their knees. All right, y'all need to try that, okay? Try that. Unless your knees are bad, I understand. But uh, get, get you a prayer pillow. Get in that posture before Jesus. Pray on your knees. Um, that means uh, grabbing a Bible. Uh, you got to have a Bible to sit at the feet of Jesus because Jesus is here spiritually, but he's not here physically. So if you want to learn from him, these are the words that he left so you can learn from him. How about a journal? Okay, raise your hands if you're a journaler, if you like to journal. Okay, okay, we got more journalers. I'll go about 30, 40 journalers. I love journaling. I, I don't know. I've always wrote things down. You could ask my wife. We got this cabinet at the house, and it just has all my journals ever since I became a Christian. And it is just like stacked on one side and stacked on the other side. And I was just sitting with Jesus the other night, and I realized that, that, that I'm out of journals. So I got to go get another journal. Um, one pastor said, good students take notes. Good students take notes. One thing I realized lifting weights in the gym over the years, the guys who were really serious about lifting weights, they're always taking notes. Or the coaches taking notes. Like they're like, okay, I lifted this much weight, this many reps, this many sets. You write things down. If you're serious about something, you usually got a plan. You know what I mean? So there's some things in your life that you're serious about, and there's a plan, meaning things are written down, and you're very intentional about that thing. So I want to encourage you when you sit at the feet of Jesus to be intentional and to take notes, to be a disciple, to be a learner. Grab a journal. And also, when you choose the good part to sit at the feet of Jesus, Resist the temptation to rush. You want to sit at the feet of Jesus and you want it to be unhurried time. So you can sit and so you can learn. Because when we rush, we're distracted. There is something that is distracting us. And, you know, one of the best policies, if you have a really busy day, if you have so much going on, I know how it feels. Uh, moms, I, I, I know where you're at. I see my wife. Uh, you work in business. I, I, I feel that. I've been there. Um, and there's so much. I mean, you got meetings stacked on meetings stacked on meetings. There is so much to do. One of the best things to do if you have a day like that is to stop. Sometimes you have to stop to start. So you stop and you say, this is the busiest day. I'm going to take five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I'm going to get this out right here. I'm going to have my journal right here. I got my prayer pillow right here. And I'm giving this day over to the Lord. And just by spending those few minutes with the Lord, and it might be short, man. You might only have three minutes. You got a meeting coming up. Say the Lord's Prayer. Read a verse. Look at your Bible reading plan. Get in what you can get in. But man, just some simple, intentional time with Jesus. It can change the direction of your whole day. It can change your whole attitude. It can change your mindset. It can change the way that you approach people in these upcoming meetings. Choosing the good part. And now, since the weather is finally nice, right? This is what I want everyone to do. Will you guys do this for me? Every single person here, everyone watching online, I want you to do this at least one time this summer. Okay, with the weather is nice, outdoor solitude and refreshment. Okay, so I want every person to carve out two hours, two hours a time. Is that too long? Oh, okay. I go four hours, but hey, two hours, let's start with two hours. 
I want you to get that, that, that pillow if you like praying on your knees. I want you to get a beautiful uh, spot location. I want you to set the date in your calendar. I want you to uh, have a Bible, have a journal, and I want you to spend time with the Lord. Some of the moms say, man, pastor, I can't do that. I have too many responsibilities. I got too much going on. Men, it's time for the men to step up. So men, <laughs> you like that? Does that preach right there? Hold on, let me try it again. It's time for the men to step up. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. So, hey, men, if you have some mothers in your lives, I want you to afford them the opportunity of two hours to get away. You know, take care of the house, take care of the kids, whatever you got to do. Do the chores. Two hours to get away. One time this summer for this solitude, this refreshment with the Lord. Now, ladies, this is not a spa day, all right? We don't want to look at our online banking. See, $487 came out of the spa, okay? Hey, spa days are nice. Uh, you know, golfing is nice. All these outdoor activities are nice. But I'll tell you from experience, uh, there's a lot of things that I enjoy doing on this earth, uh, but there is nothing more uh, productive, uh, more refreshing, and more valuable than spending time with Jesus. And I hope that everyone discovers that I, I have discovered that, but I, I want to get to the point where I'm running to that. You know what I mean? Because when it's nice out, just like you guys, I have other I have ideas like, man, it's nice out. Let me go do this. Let me go do that. But I want to get to the point where I'm running to that. Like that is definitely in my, in my top things to do, but I want that to be my, my best thing to do because that is uh, the good part. So Martha was serving. Mary was sitting. So you wonder, what is the balance of serving and sitting? Because they're both good. Well, look no further than Jesus. Jesus modeled the perfect balance of serving and sitting. Jesus served so many people. He preached, he teached, he healed, but at the same time, he spent time with the Father. As we read in the Gospels, Jesus withdrew early and often to get away. So he gave us this perfect balance. Jesus was never distracted from spending time with the Father. Jesus was never worried and troubled about many things. He served as the Father told him to serve. Even all the way to the cross to die for our sins, he was obedient to that calling to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. But he also withdrew and spent time with the Father. I want to share with you Psalm chapter 73, verses 25 and 26. This is a psalm of Asaph. He wrote, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. He's the portion. Jesus is the portion. Jesus is the good part. So when you think about the good part, what do you think of? So I love sweets and dessert. 
Any of y'all like cinnamon rolls in here? Raise your hand if you like cinnamon rolls. Praise God. We got more people liking cinnamon rolls than prayer pillows and journals. Amen. <laughs> That's where we're at as a church, Lord. That's where we're at. Help us. Meet us where we are, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So the cinnamon roll, everyone knows the good part of the cinnamon roll, right? You know, that, that, that outer part, you know, it, it, it's good. It's good. But the, let's get to the good part. It's that middle part, right? Woo! That cinnamon roll, boy. People going to be rolling up to Bellevue Square Cinnabon after this. That's the good part. Get to the good part. How about uh, Pastor Ron Trell, the good part of a song? Good part of a song it might be the bridge or a chorus. Let's get to the good part. I want to get to the good part. I like that one song, get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Boy, that's that good part. I might jump on that part. Let's get to the good part, right? Hold on to that good part. How about uh, for you readers, the good part of a story? You get to that story and you're like, man, this is the good part. This is when it's going to get good. This is the climax right here. This is the good part. Well, I want to tell you in this life, there, there's, a, there, there's a lot of pages and there's a lot of lyrics and uh, there's a lot of uh, carbohydrates, right? But the good part of life is Jesus. The good part is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Can someone testify that there's nothing better than Jesus? Have you experienced him? Have you experienced him? Have you experienced the good part? Sitting with him, being with him, being in his presence. That doesn't mean that you can't serve. Jesus never told Martha not to serve, but she was distracted with much serving. So she had to reevaluate that so she could look at her sister Mary and get to the good part. The good part part of life. And so I believe Antioch, as you examine your serving and, and your priorities and you're less distracted and people like me are less worried and we're less troubled, we'll get to the good part. And when you get to the good part, and you're just spending time with Jesus, it does amazing things. You get locked in. Like, you might have been hungry before you read, and now you're not hungry anymore. Has that ever happened? That happened to me. I was like, ooh, this is good. This is food right here. This is spiritual food. When you get to the good part, like, even last night when I was at the good part, and, and, and the good part can't be like... um the serving part, like the uh, pouring out part, like the getting ready for the sermon or getting ready to teach a Bible study part. That's a serving part. We're talking about the good part where you get poured into, where it's for yourself and you get poured into, you know what I'm saying? And you know what you, what you say when, when you're at the good part? I promise you'll say this. This is good. Man, this is good. I'm so thankful that I spent time on the good part. This is so good. I was running around all day doing all of these things and trying to be productive and, and serve and do all things. But man, ain't nothing like this. This is the good part. I got my journal and I'm writing and I'm learning and I'm stopping and I'm reflecting and I'm praying. But Antioch, I want you to choose the good part. And so as we uh, close today, I want to show you the, our life group questions for this week. Um, we have three life group questions that I wrote. So one thing that I said uh, last week is the sermon doesn't stop on Sundays. So do we have those life group questions? Amen. Number one, what was wrong with Martha's hospitality? 
So, we, so life groups are small groups that meet in homes. A lot of them meet on Sundays. So I say the sermon doesn't stop on Sundays. The sermon isn't over. The life group questions are an extension of the sermon. Just like I, you know, pray over the message and God works, I pray over the life group questions. And I want to encourage everyone to get in a life group and let God work in their lives. Question number two, what are some practical ways to reevaluate your priorities? Man, how helpful would it be to be in in a group, in a home with other believers? You eat a meal together, and then you talk about some practical ways to reevaluate your priorities. See, this is monologue, but life group is dialogue. And number three, why is sitting with Jesus the good portion? Okay, you heard the pastor talk about it, but why is it the good portion? What does it mean to you? How have you found it to be the good portion? 